Good morning. I have a soap to cut, so I thought I might as well do a video and have a little ramble while I cut it up, and uh, we'll see what we end up talking about. So I've just got up, and I've been on Facebook, and uh, Kimberly put up a video yesterday about tea tree oil and the dangers, and. Um, and it sparked a lot of debate, but um, I, for one, was very grateful for her for putting that up there. I guess sometimes we, um, maybe when we know things, we don't share it, and I'm, I'm guilty of that, you know. But we've all got to look after ourselves and the customers that we supply. And, um, yeah, the whole tea tree debate is uh, very interesting so if you're not one of nature's arts uh, fans on facebook be sure to go and check it out i'll put the link down below so you can go and like the page and have a have a read because if you've got a pet or um you're concerned about the use of any essential well tea tree essential oil then go and check out what she's got to say because uh you need to know okay so oh yeah i got um these new silicone liners from eBay. So this is like here, this is like blue, a blue silicone liner. And I bought them because the base of my soaps always come out creased because of my paper. So uh, I'll show you how it's going to come out. A little bit wet still on the base, but that is just amazing. I'm really... Oh, wow, this is the first one I've made since um, I bought them and it's, that is so smooth, so smooth, so I'm really happy with that. And they were really cheap, they were like um, £2.50 or £2.99 or something like that. So I'm really stoked that that's worked as it has, that's really nice. Um, what am I doing? my board to cut oh that feels so much better I can't believe it okay, so I've got a few things to do today but um just gonna put my gloves on yesterday I got round to making some soap I didn't make loads, I managed to make this one and um, today I've got to make a few more but I've got orders to get out the door first so I'll cut this and then get on with the orders and hopefully I can make some this afternoon. Um, I made a, uh, this is Seven Sins this batch and this is a little cupcake that I had left over with the wet, the um, wet, the white um, topping. So I always make myself a little cupcake just so I've got something to use out of each batch before I put it on general sale. So, if I turn this around, this is always a bit of a bugger to cut this one, but I'll do my best. I'm trying to get it straight. Um, it's still gonna be quite soft because I only made this yesterday afternoon. So, uh, it's not been 24 hours yet. I normally do leave my soaps for 24 hours, but this one has just been I don't know, maybe 12 or something like that. Pretty much. And this is completely sold out at the moment. Because I've been behind trying to get stuff done. So, uh, yeah, everything's been on a back burner. Like, making soap has just had to wait. So, now, hopefully, I can get back on it. And I've got all the Halloween stuff to do as well. So, I am behind. But I'm waiting for supplies of stuff too. So, I can't do anything until one of my suppliers gets these oils back in stock which will be next week so I'll just make all the regular soaps I need to make first and then get onto the Halloween there'll still be plenty of time anyway so I'll be all right okay this is still quite light in the middle but even after just 10 or so minutes this will start to darken and I really see it quite significantly once it starts, in fact it's already starting, 
it just goes dark really, really quickly. But um, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And I really, really like the deep, dark, sort of really brown colour. I love this soap. It was only ever meant to be a limited edition to use up some uh, fragrance oils I'd got and then it ended up being too popular so I had to keep making it and then I had to buy in all those fragrance oils again so but it's a nice scent Man, you've got to get those silicone liners if you haven't got them get them I can't believe the uh, how nice that feels on the bottom. I'm so used to it. All these years, I've never never used anything like that in the base of my mould. So it's always just been um, on greaseproof paper, which always creases. So this is it's really nice to have something a bit more, you know. I'm just going to take the ends off. And then I'll use my cutter today again. Nice little gloopy bit in there. I don't really know what else I want to talk about. I can't really... It's like when you start a video, you feel like you're put on the spot a bit. So I don't really know what to talk about today. So I'll just go along as I am. <laughs> and whatever comes up, comes up. Oh yeah, I know one thing. Ma um, I watched um, Harry Potter last night, The Deathly Hallows Part 1. Now I've not seen Part 1, and I know Part 2 is out, so... Let's have my cup of tea. So um, I wanted to catch up, really. But we started watching it last night, and i kind of forgotten where we got to with the whole series. I know we've seen most of, like, well, we've seen all the films up to this one, and... Uh, it started and I thought, bloody hell, this is really, really dark from, like, the word go. And then I remembered that they'd killed Dumbledore and I'd forgotten about that. So, I, you know, it's been a while since we watched the last one. But, of course, old Voldemort is in control and uh, everything is horrible and dark and nasty. But it took us like a you know, good few minutes to get into the film and realise why. <laughs> but, oh my God, really good. I so enjoyed that film last night. It was really, really good. But I don't think me and Matt spoke all the way through, apart from to say we were scared. <laughs> the whole bits are so dark. I was thinking, God, if you have kids and you took them to see this, I don't know how kids react to things like that nowadays. But if I was a kid, that would have frightened me, that film. But uh, maybe kids are more resilient these days. I don't know. <laughs> Although our horror films that we had were Halloween, which I hate, and um, Jaws, which I love, but my dad used to put films on and then look at us to see our reactions, to see that we were scared, and laugh at us. <laughs> Bit sick. <laughs> but um, yeah, we used to have a laugh. He even had us watching Friday the Thirteenth films like that. I, oh God, I can't really watch horror films anymore. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Some I don't mind, but yeah. But no, Harry Potter is obviously not a horror film, but it was it was really dark last night. I thought, Christ, I can't wait for the next one now because I do like films like that. But it was very tense watching. So, uh, they're clever filmmakers. And uh, the next one I can't wait to see is The Hobbit. I'm a huge Tolkien fan, and Lord of the Rings is just amazing. So The Hobbit, I, I can't wait to see that. I think it's going to be amazing too. And there's Empire magazine out this month, which has got uh, The Hobbit on the front. So I might go and grab a copy of that. How many have I got there? Two, four, six, eight, ten, yeah, twelve again. There's a nice end block there. Again, it's got the white witch sticks in it too. And I've been watching Kia's cutting videos with envy at her um, her tank. 
I so would love a tank. I've just got to get that end piece off now. So I'm saving up at the moment to try and afford to get one because they're quite expensive. They're not really expensive, in, you know, if you think about what you get for your money. But um, I've wanted one for a long time, but I've like put it off. But then when I saw Kia, there's nothing like seeing somebody else <laughs> get one. And I think, oh, she got a tank. So I was just thinking, oh, God, you know, rather than buy a dress with some extra profits that I get, how about I buy a tank and make my life a whole lot easier? <laughs> I thought I'll try, but I'm not getting very far with the saving at the moment, but I'm going to try. I got into contact with uh, For Craft's Sake and asked them about the shipping. And um, it's actually quite cheap. Well, it's not cheap, but it's $78 for them to ship to the UK, which I don't think is too bad. So the tank obviously isn't too heavy. I think Kia said that in a video. They're not as heavy as you, as they look they, you know, like they will be, but... Um, yeah, I could really do with them, with one. This is a good cutter for, like, when I started, I've, been, I've had this... Hang on a sec. I've had this cutter since I started making soap. I mean, maybe a few sort of months into making soap. So this has lasted me a good long while, and it hasn't, you know, ever caused me any grief. It's a really good cutter. But um, maybe for the hobbyist, because now... When I do have lots of batches to make and I need to cut up, you know, all the soaps really quickly, well, not quickly, but I don't want it to, like, you know, take me all day when I could be packaging orders rather than cutting soap. So I really could do with a tank. And I've looked at other people's and I've looked at other sites that sell soap cutters, but I haven't seen one that looks as good as the tank. So I'm going to save and I'm going to get the one I've always wanted. So there you go. So in all, it's going to cost me about £250, which is about, I think, maybe $350 or something like that. But that's with the shipping. So I'm going to keep going. It won't take too long to save that money. It's just putting it to the side rather than thinking I'll have a little luxury this month or I'll, have, I'll buy somebody's soap, you know, things like that. Or I got carried away with buying soaps. And uh, I'm still in soap rehab at the moment. I'm using Sonia's Bliss Monkey Fart Soap. And um, I've got to say how good it is. I've used it once so far. And here at home, I'm doing a little experiment on how long a bar of soap will last me. And um, like a bar of handmade soap, I mean. So I'm trying everybody else's because they're the ones I'm using at the moment. I'm not using many of my own. There's a few. I had like a piece of urban jungle on the go, but that's all gone now. Um, so there's a few in my stash box. I've got so many people's soaps to use. And I'm going to do like a little, just my own little survey, just to see how long people's soap last. And it's not for any reason other than to just see. Because I actually prefer a soap that doesn't last very long. <laughs> so that I can crack open another one. However crazy that may sound, everybody wants like a long-lasting bar of soap. I don't. I want one that's going to last just a little while so that I can open up another one. I don't think that's weird. I think I just get too excited over new things and I always want to open up a new one. So after I've tried a soap, I'm kind of uh, over it and I want to open up another one. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm trying to be good. So yeah, Sonia's Bliss. I'm using that Monkey Fart Soap. And the um, soap is amazing. It's really, really soft on your skin. The scent is really, really nice. And, um, yeah, I was just amazed by the soap. Well, not amazed. I knew she makes good soap. But, uh, yeah, I was really, really happy with the results. It just was so, so nice to use. And uh, it's like the lather, repeat, lather, repeat syndrome. When I started using it, it was just, I couldn't stop using it. I sort of lathered up, washed it off, lathered up, washed it off, <laughs> lathered up again. And then when I put it to the side, I was sort of, you know, swishing about in the bath a bit. And then uh, I took it back again and I had another go. <laughs> it was that good. I was really, really, really impressed. And I love doing that with soap anyway. I mean, you know, when I open up a new soap that doesn't, hasn't been made by me, I tend to go really 
you know, overboard with the lather, repeat lather thing. I did it with Donna's um, from Valhalla Soap Company. I used the Goth Witch Soap because I love that scent so much. It almost reminds me of dark graveyards and I love that kind of gothic thing going on. I love that. And the scent of the soap definitely creates an atmosphere when you're using it. So, uh, yeah, that was really cool. But, um, yeah, normally I never just, you know, wash my body, wash it off. I'm always sort of, would just keep going just so I can savour the soap more. And I've never done that with commercial soaps, not ever. Shower gel is not ever, and I don't use shower gel anymore. Although I did buy one a while ago by the body shops. I love the uh, olive scent by them. So I had a shower gel, but I used a bit and oh, it's like you get so used to handmade stuff and you realise, you know, that the ingredients going in are so much better than just some chemical put together and a scent, you know, infused in there just to... Uh, create the illusion that you're using something all natural. I mean, the body shop have never been all natural. But I have always loved the products and I liked um, what Anita Roddick did with her time on this earth. I think she was a good person, especially, you know, with the fair trade and all that kind of thing. And I believe in that more than anything, really, because I believe that people who produce something that is worthwhile should be paid what they're worth rather than the big companies taking money out of their pockets I think they should get the money in their pockets so that they can continue to produce a really really good product and in their own right they're the artisans you know because they're the ones producing like you know like say shea butter or cocoa butter for instance that's coming from you know really good places where care and attention is put into what they produce but um as for sustainable factor it's it does my head in i've been researching the sustainable palm thing for a long time and i'm getting nowhere really well i am getting somewhere i'm getting to learn about it more but um one thing that i did find out was that when you buy sustainable palm what you're getting in the box isn't necessarily sustainable. Um, what you're doing by buying from an RSPO member, and that's the round table for sustainable palm oil. Um, when you're buying from one of those members or a supplier that's a member of that society, then what you're doing is putting the money into the hands of the farmer or the company that owns the farmer you're not actually getting in the box what they say is sustainable palm because all of the palm oil is apparently processed in the same factories so uh yeah when you get it over into your country and you it, you know it says you've bought sustainable palm oil blah -de blah -de blah what's actually in the box may not be sustainable palm or may not have come from the sustainable farmer because it all gets plonked in together so it kind of defeats what you what we're trying to achieve by using those products but um i guess it's going you know something is, it's not all bad something is being done but it's what you actually receive that it bothers me it bothers me a lot but so i don't claim anymore to um use sustainable palm oil until i absolutely I'm certain that I can. And I don't think that's ever going to happen. Certainly not in my lifetime, I don't think, anyway. It's hard to say. If anybody's got any more info, then feel free to leave a comment. But, you know, it sparks debate. Every time I come up against it, and, you know, you're buying, like, the thing is, that when you buy sustainable palm, it costs almost double to buy sustainable than it does to buy something... That isn't, you know, it, it, so nothing really makes sense. And then to pay double for something that doesn't necessarily, you know, the box doesn't necessarily, necessarily contain sustainable palm, then you kind of just, your money, I mean, who could be sure where your money's going? That's the, that's the point I'm trying to make, is who is actually getting the money? Does it go into the hands of the farmer? Because you're not seeing any evidence and 
it's just there's too many things i think it's maybe a fresh debate so there's not enough known by um people like us i certainly don't know enough i try and find out you know in spare time but what spare time you have you you try and chill out a bit really but when i'm in the mood i sort of go looking to um find out a little bit more about sustainable palm but th it's just so many conflicting stories and it just wears out your brain after a while and you just think actually what's the point what's the point in trying to find out when actually you don't know who's telling you the truth so kind of just pisses me off a bit really so you can continue buying what you buy but you can't guarantee anything is what it says on the tin and neither can they. And at least they admit it. I mean, they're not, you know, these people aren't lying to us and saying, oh, yes, you've got this off this farmer, this off this farmer. They're actually telling you the truth that what you're getting may not be what you think. But I suppose those things are out of their control and also out of their control of the people and the countries that, that produce the oil because they're poor countries. They don't have the money to set up new factories to produce the sustainable palm alone. If they did, it would probably cost even more, you know. So I suppose they're doing what they can. But it would be nice to know that what you're being told is the truth. And with so much corruption and conspiracy everywhere, it's hard to believe anything anymore, really. So kind of just take care of yourself and do what you can. And there ends the video. <laughs> Sorry for the run, that's gone for 20 minutes. So there's seven sin soap, all cut up. There's probably about 26 bars again. And there's some samples there, along with my tea, which has gone cold. And my cupcake. Okay, see you all soon. Bye.